Hello curious learners, this is Mr. Buffington and in this lesson we are going to look at solving equations, two-step equations with fractions. We're going to look at all different types of those so that you can be very confident that you'll know how to get that done by the time we are finished. So first off, the steps, the overview of how you solve this, you start by peeling away layers. In any multi-step equation, so if it takes more than one step, you have to start farther away from the variable. Another way to look at this is that you will do the opposite of the order of operations. The order of operations says we do our multiplication and division, then we do our addition subtraction. So the opposite of that would be to complete any multiplication division stuff second after you do your addition subtraction and you'll see that happening in all of our examples. Secondly, I'm going to give you three steps. I want you to follow those steps. No matter how simple the equations seem, if you follow them and you get these steps down, you'll be able to use them when the equations get harder. And the third thing is that the you need to know the inverse of division is multiplication. Inverse operations are opposite operations. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. The opposite or the inverse of division is multiplication. Let's get to it. In our first equation, x over 5 plus 4 equals 7. We have a fraction and we're adding 4 on the end of it. But that's not what we want to focus on at first. We want to follow the steps that are on the left. Okay, if we start looking at this equation, we might get a little bit dizzy. But if we train our eyes, we'll be able to solve this in a pretty straightforward way. Number one, find the variable. The variable is the letter inside of this equation. And the letter is x. X marks the spot. It will for all of the questions in this lesson. Next, what happened or what is connected to it? There are two things that are connected to it. It is we have adding 4 and dividing by 5. Now I've put them in this order because this is the order that we are going to do the reverse. We're, I started with the thing that's farthest away from X and I moved in towards X. So you can kind of think of it as the Shrek mode. We're peeling the layers off, just like the onions. Well, with this, we are going to start at the farthest thing away. We're going to peel that away first. So it's going to look like this. First, we will subtract 4, and then we will multiply times 5. Those inverse operations will get everything around the x to disappear, and we will be left with the x by itself on the left side of the equation and we'll have our solution on the right side of the equation. Let's do it. Start out with subtracting 4 from both sides of the equation. Boom! 4 minus 4 is 0. That makes that disappear. 7 minus 4 leaves us with 3. Now we have an equation x divided by 5 is equal to 3. So the inverse of dividing by 5 is to multiply times 5. We do that on both sides of this equation, and we're left with, again, x, our 5 times x over 5. The 5s will cancel out, leaving us with x by itself, and then 5 times 3 is 15. Now, when you're working, especially when you're working with larger, more complicated equations, it's very important that we don't trust what we do. Hmm? That that's kind of sounds funny, but we can trust what we do after we check our solution. So let's go ahead and check our work. This is our equation, all the work that we did before. We are going to check our solution by putting it back into the original equation. The or original equation was x divided by 5 plus 4 is equal to 7. So let's plug 15 in there and see if it works. Is 15 divided by 5 plus 4 equal to 7? When we're doing our check, we need to do the order of operations in the correct order. So we're going to do our division first and then our addition afterwards. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. Boom. We have the correct answer here. Let me list that for you there. 7 is equal to 7. That is the correct solution. We found that the work is correct. Now, one mistake that we often make is to think we, we did all that work and we got to 7. Wow, my answer is 7. Our answer is not 7. That was just checking to see if it worked. Our answer 
is the solution, and that is that x is equal to 15. Remember, go back to our solution. This was just checking to see if the solution was correct. If both sides of the equal sign are equal, our solution was correct. Therefore, the answer of this is 15. That's a very common mistake. After we do all that work, we like the number we get to at the bottom. All right. Now we're going to work with a, an equation that has division and subtraction in it. x over 9 minus 15 equals 12. We're going to follow the same steps you see on the left. We find our variable x. We ask what happened to x or what's connected to x. We have minus 15 and divided by 9. Again, I'm going to put them in the opposite of the order of operations here. Or I'm going to start peeling away the layers that are farthest away and then working my way in to the center to, the, to my variable. So I am first going to add 15. That will get rid of the 15. Then I'm going to multiply times 9. And that will get rid of the divided by 9. And I'll be left with my x by itself. That's called isolating my variable. Let's see how I do it. Plus 15, both sides of the equation. That leaves me with x over 9 on the left side. And 12 plus 15 gave me 27. Now, a common mistake is that we see these numbers 9 and 27, and we think, oh, I know 9 times 3. And we just sort of skip steps and forget what we're doing. But it's very important that we continue to follow the steps that we have listed there. That's x divided by 9. So to solve it, we need to multiply both sides times 9. It's a common trick that teachers will use is put in some numbers that go together to see if you'll skip a step. Don't get caught in that trap. So go ahead and multiply 9 times x over 9. The 9s will cancel out. And 27 times 9 gives us 243. Wow, that's a very different answer than if we had tried to skip work and just say 27 divided by 9 is 3 or something like that. Okay, so this is the correct answer. But just to be extra sure, we're going to check our work. Check, check, check. Give me that equation. I'm going to substitute x is equal to 243 into the equation. So I have 243 divided by 9 minus 15 is equal to 12. I'll follow the order of operations. First, I'll do my division. 243 divided by 9 is equal to 27. And now I'm going to subtract 27 minus 15. And 27 minus 15 is definitely equal to 12. That tells us our work is correct and our solution is 243. That's our value for x. Now our next question is we are going to work with negative numbers. We are still going to follow all of the same steps even when our equation looks complicated like this. We're going to follow all of the steps. Let's try it out. First off, find our variable x. What happened or what is connected to x? Well, we've got that minus negative 2 and we're dividing by 5. Again, I put the subtraction before the division because I'm doing the order of operations in reverse, peeling away the things that are farthest and then moving towards my variable. So I'm going to do the inverse to both sides. Minus negative 2 is the inverse is to add negative 2. Divided by 5, the inverse is to multiply times 5. Let's do it. Negative 2 minus negative 2 plus negative 2 cancel each other out. And then on the right side there, I have negative 3 plus negative 2, which gives me negative 5. x divided by 5 is equal to negative 5. All right. My next step, multiply both sides of the equation times 5. Everything else has stayed the same. I'm just multiplying times 5 on both sides of the equation. Notice with this one, I did um, 5 times the fraction here. And then with the other one, I did negative 5 times 5. It doesn't matter if you put the 5 in front or if you put it out back. Usually, we write it outside like this. That way, when we're writing it out on paper, we don't have to add this whole other step. Because we would kind of put them outside and that way, we don't waste another step writing it out in the paper. But either way is fine. You can put that multiplication in whatever order you like. And what we end up with is 
5 times x over 5, the 5's will cancel out, leaving me with x by itself. And negative 5 times positive 5 gives me a negative 25. When I get a complicated equation with a bunch of negatives like this, I always check my work. So let's do it. We're going to plug the value of negative 25 into that equation where you see the value of x. It'll look like this. Negative 25 divided by 5 minus negative 2 equals negative 3. Holy negatives. Wow. Let's go ahead and solve this using the order of operations. Negative 25 divided by 5 gives me negative 5. Minus negative 2 can be written as plus 2, so I can simplify my work there a little bit. And the negative 3 is right there. Now, is negative 5 plus 2 equal to negative 3? Yeah, it, it sure is. So we get a green check mark on that one. Our work is complete. We have solved and shown that it is correct. Our answer is that x is equal to negative 25. In this last question, we're going to look at what happens when you have both multiplication and division inside of an equation, and you'll find we do exactly the same thing that we've done before, but I just wanted to, to give us this example because it is one type of two-step equation that you will get with fractions. So where is my variable? Our I should be trained on that x. We look at there and we see the x. Now I ask myself, what happened? There are two things that happened to this variable. One, it's being multiplied times 5, and two, it's being divided by 3. Now with multiplication and division both in, in here, it's hard to know which one gets done first. Because of the order of operations being in reverse, it's sometimes confusing. Well, multiplication and division get done in one step, whatever they appear from left to right. So doing that in opposite is sometimes a confusing way to think of it. Which is why I kind of like the idea of peeling away the layers. I'm looking at my variable here. What is the closest thing to my variable? The 5. So I'm going to first peel away this 3, and then I'm going to take care of the 5. So the order I'm going to do them in is to multiply times 3 and then divide by 5. Let's do it. I multiply both sides times 3. The 3's cancel out on the left side, and I'm left with 5x equals 90. Nice. Now I can divide both sides by 5, and that leaves me with my solution. x is equal to 18. Notice how by following those steps and peeling off the layers, we are successfully able to get to our solution. Let's check our work. Here's our equation on the left, and we are going to check our work to try and make sure that it's correct. We've got our equation, x, 5x equals, or divided by 3 is equal to 30. We're going to substitute the value of 18 into the equation. 5 times 18 divided by 3 is equal to 30. When we do the order of operations, we do what's on top of our fraction bar first. So we would have 5 times 18, which gives us 90. And we divide by 3. 90 divided by 3 looks like our work is correct. The sides, uh, Both sides of the equation are balanced and equal to each other. Wonderful. That's great when we can solve that type of question. Our variable x is equal to 18. Quick recap on how to solve. You follow the steps. Those three steps that are listed will always lead you to a good place. Follow those steps and you will be able to solve them. Also, I like to say peel away the layers. Some people like to say do the opposite of the order of operations. Both ways will work for you and get you the correct answer. Hope that lesson was helpful for you, curious learners. Have a wonderful day.